let's be real. I think we're all procrastinators to some extent, but if you're on the more messier spectrum of it, then you might relate to this. If I have an assignment, I won't do it until two days before the deadline. Then I'll panic, I'll spend the next two days in hell, full moon nighter, and somehow manage to finish it right before the deadline. And for some reason, this seems to happen to me with every single assignment that I have, which always makes a funny story to tell your friends afterwards, but it stops being funny when it comes to something that has no deadline. I work under pressure and what gives me pressure is the deadline. And so when I don't have it, I'll just never do it. So when it comes to learning a language, this is a problem. If you watch any advice videos about how to learn a language, they'll mention that the most important thing is consistency, discipline, making it a habit, which are words that I'm basically allergic to at this point because I know that I'm horrible at it. I know that I'm bad at doing those stuff. Having said that, I've managed to go from not knowing any Spanish at all to being capable of making videos entirely in Spanish in less than a year. And I've self-taught myself everything I know. Now, don't get me wrong. My Spanish is not perfect. Just watch the videos where I'm speaking Spanish. But my point is, and I want you to understand this, that this was previously something unimaginable for me to continuously study a language on my own and get to a level where I can somewhat communicate is honestly surprising to me. So I want to talk to my fellow lazy people out there because I have so many tips and tricks that I've been using on myself to basically hack my brain to make myself study. So here's a video about how to learn a language when you're a chronic procrastinator. And by the way, my name is Emmy. Hello, I live in Tokyo. My channel is mostly about learning Spanish. Sometimes I do Japan type of stuff. I sometimes do things about books. Voila, hello, thank you. Thank you, thank you for listening to my self-promotion. Anyways, let's get on with the video. I have 10 tips that I wanna talk about and I've divided it into three different categories. The first category is lowering your standards. Second is keeping it fun. And three is throwing yourself into situations that you have to learn. And just a disclaimer, but obviously you don't have to do all of this. Our situations are are different, our brains work differently. So just kind of cherry pick the tips that you like and apply it to your own studies. So I first want to start with the category of keeping it fun because I think it's essential to make sure that you're actually enjoying a lot of the things that you're doing. Learning a language is not only just opening a textbook, it's about watching Netflix shows, watching YouTubers, and kind of swapping your entertainment world into the language that you're learning. And the first tip that I have for you guys is don't stick to a show just because it's popular. Okay, this is like very specific as well. <laughs> just because everybody's saying a show is good doesn't mean that you like it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. Just know your Make sure not to force yourself to watch shows that are boring just for the sake of learning. Okay, we're on tip number two. This is an unpopular opinion. I can already feel the comments disagreeing with me, but I would say ditch the YouTube channels and the podcasts that are for Spanish learners because they are boring period. And okay, I actually wouldn't say to ditch it entirely, but I would suggest to just stick to one or two of your favorite ones and make sure that those aren't the only content that you're watching. And for me, when I go to YouTube, I'm here not to take a class, but I'm here to be entertained. And those type of videos feel too much like a classroom. It feels too much like studying. And also I feel like it gives you the illusion that you studied a lot. You feel like you've studied after watching a seven minute video all about Japanese slang, but that is only seven minutes. I personally think it's way better to watch an hour of a Mexican soap opera than to always be watching those short educational videos. And after that controversial statement, I wanna go on to our next category. This is gonna be lowering your standards, lowering the expectations for yourself. And I have four tips in this category. The first one is don't use too many apps. Don't use too many apps. This, I cannot stress how much this has helped me. I don't have a lot of language learning apps on my phone and I do that very strategically. Personally, these are the only language apps that I have on my phone right now. Language transfer is an audio course on grammar. I have a video about that. The two in the middle are both dictionaries and and Anki is a flashcard app to memorize vocabulary. And I can make a video about all the resources I use if you want me to, but I think it's so important to prioritize your programs. I've seen videos that are like, Duolingo isn't actually that bad. Don't listen to those. <laughs> you are a procrastinator. We are a procrastinator. I don't wanna be wasting my precious motivation to apps like Duolingo. There are other better apps, really good apps that I would rather spend that extra 10 minutes that I feel like studying on. So I would say just leave the programs that are best and delete all the other mediocre ones because there's just a lot of them. And from my experience, I would just never use them. Okay, the next couple of tips is a little bit more about your mindset. The first one is don't think about studying. The more you think about studying, the bigger the task it will seem to be. Try not to think about it. And when you're like, huh, I should study Spanish, study it then. The starting part is the hardest. Don't think about starting, just start it. And my next tip is just do five minutes. If you're like me, you have a lot of days where you just don't feel like doing it and just tell yourself 
just do five minutes. And it's literally fine even if you hardly learn anything. Just the fact that you've opened a textbook or you've learned one new word, that is what's important. A lot of the times if you start studying, then you will continue to study for like more than five minutes. But even if it is five minutes, just it's okay. Like literally it's okay. It's better than just saying, oh, I don't have time today. Go to sleep. The next day is going to be the same story. The next day is going to be the same story. You want to avoid that cycle as much as possible. And another tip is if you do skip a day, so what? So what? Just say oops and open your textbook. Do it today. Like some days I literally just forget entirely about Spanish. I would forget it about like for like a whole week and then I realize, oh, I haven't studied Spanish for a week then you do it. It's not that serious, so don't take it too seriously. And I've actually made a whole video about kind of more of the mindset type of thing. And I also dive into why do we procrastinate? So if you're interested, check it out as well. The link will be in the description. And we're gonna move on to our final category, which is throwing yourself into situations to learn, to force yourself to be in a situation where you have to speak with native people. Because yes, we, we have to force ourselves. And so my first tip is to watch shows with no English subtitles. If you're watching a Spanish show, watch it in Spanish. Watching a French show, watch it in French. If it's a language like Japanese, Chinese, Korean, and if the alphabet is different, Called, that's kind of a different story and I can't speak on that. But at least for Spanish, I think it's a way better idea to watch a Spanish show with Spanish subtitles. And I have a video where I explain kind of the reasoning behind this. So I'll put that video in the description as well. Check it out if you want a further explanation. Okay, the next tip is to book your italki lessons when you have the inspiration. Let me explain. <laughs> so italki is a platform that you can talk to Spanish teachers at a very affordable price. But this applies to any kind of platform that you're using to, to book a lesson and to speak with a native speaker. For for me, I found out that I can't rely on myself to like constantly always make sure to book a lesson because when I don't feel like it, I just won't book a lesson. I'm always thinking not today, not this week. So what I do to myself is that I would book like lessons in advance for the next two weeks. And I realized that I really just need to do that when I have the motivation, when I feel inspired of like, I need to like do Spanish more. I need to talk more Spanish. Book your lesson right there and then. When you have that inspiration, go on the italki app and book your next lesson with a teacher that you like. For me, if there's like a set date, then I'll, I'll show up to that lesson and I'll do the lesson even if I don't feel like it. So, so that's been a good way for me to keep on doing eye talking. And my next tip is to make a YouTube channel. Um, if you're new here, I literally made this YouTube channel to keep myself accountable and I go into a detailed explanation of it in this video that will be in the description as well. But YouTube has genuinely been a really good way for me to just hold myself accountable to make sure that I don't give up or even if I abandon Spanish for a little bit. YouTube is a thing that always makes me come back. And it doesn't even have to be YouTube. It can be like Instagram, TikTok, I don't know. And you can just do it for your friends because like initially when I was doing this YouTube channel, nobody was watching me except for my friends and family. But I still have messages from friends or like acquaintances telling me that your Spanish YouTube channel keeps me motivated. And even the fact that a couple of people said that to me, that made me feel like, oh, I want to post more videos. I want to keep on studying Spanish. So it was a good way for me to keep myself motivated. And I would genuinely recommend doing it. Okay, and this is my last final tip that's honestly been helping me a lot. And that is that if you can, you should make a community in real life or at least something that you do on a regular basis. Let me explain. So basically I made a Spanish Bible study group with girls from my university and the Christian group that I'm in. And we come together once a week and we do a Bible study all in Spanish. And it was a really cool way to see my progress every week because every week I would understand a little bit more. They would be using words that I just did yesterday. And of course, probably most of you guys aren't Christian. So it's probably not a Bible group for you. But if you can find a way to make a community like that, or you can go to your local Mexican restaurant or something where the owner is a Spanish speaker, you can make it your mission to go there every single week and befriend the people there and practice your Spanish there. Or this is not really a community, but to have a language buddy that you talk to on a regular basis has also been super helpful for me. Right now, every single week on Wednesday from 10 a.m. for an hour, I have a language exchange situation going on with a Colombian guy, which Hola Felipe, si estás viendo. And for the first half an hour, we talk in Spanish. The second half an hour, we talk in English. And that has been really helpful because weeks will fly by, but having automatically that once a week session where you have to talk Spanish to somebody has been like really grounding in a way. It's been a way that's been forced
forcing me to talk in Spanish at least once a week for half an hour. So yeah, that was my 10 tips to kind of force yourself to keep on studying. I truly hope that you found some value out of this video. And this is a topic that I'm really passionate about, obviously, because I just like, I struggle so much with procrastination. Give this video a like if you found this video helpful and please share this video with somebody who you think needs it. And thank you so much for watching this video until the end. I hope that you have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.